Phylum platyhelminthes, also known as flatworms, derives their name from platus meaning flat and helminths meaning worm. The class Turbellaria are mostly free-living bottom dwellers in fresh and marine environments. They crawl on stones, sand, or vegetation. They get their name from the, their movement and stirring up the water. Flatworms usually have an unsegmented flattened body and are a triploblastic acelomate. This means that they have no space between body structures. Humans are different because they have spaces between internal structures and they have membranes to hold their organs in place. Platyhelminthes has bilateral symmetry, which means that if you cut them straight down the middle from their anterior end to their posterior end, down the median plane, then you will have two mirror images. Because these organisms are triploblastic, that lets us know that they are from, derived from three embryonic tissue layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. The ectoderm is the tissue layer that skin, cilia, which are hair-like structures, nerves, and sense organs develop from. Flatworms also have cephalization. This term means that the anterior or front end of the organism has nerve ganglion. These ganglion are attached to longitudinal nerve cords. Eye spots and photoreceptors sense light and they are shown in the green part on the diagram. Planaria demonstrate negative phototaxis, meaning the creature goes away from light. Light in the planarian environment means heat and dried out bodies, which relates back to death. In this next slide, the chemoreceptors are shown on the planaria and they are called oracles. These are used for sensing food. These animals also have mechanoreceptors that makes it so that they can keep themselves upright and help themselves to understand their environment. The second embryonic tissue layers that we are going to discuss uh, give rise to the muscles, the primitive kidneys called proto-nephridia, and the reproductive system. Since these animals do not have a heart, blood vessels, or lungs, they have to have their excretory system and their digestive system throughout their whole bodies. They have to excrete everything by diffusion and they use the flame cells and excretory pores in their excretory system to get rid of wastes to the external environment. Respiratory gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, are exchanged by diffusion through the body. Locomotion of flatworms uses many parts of the body. The epidermis or skin cells have cilia or microvilli that help with locomotion. They are shown at the bottom of the picture. The reason you're seeing this picture is that we're looking at the muscle cells that are just underneath the epidermis. There are two main types of muscle. The outer ones go around the diameter of the body and, and are called circular muscles. The inner muscles go the length of the body and are called longitudinal. There are also dorsal ventral muscles that work similar to our obliques. There are several steps involved in movement of the planarian. The first step is the head will loosen and stretch out in the direction it wants to go using cilia and muscular undulations. Then the planaria will produce adhesive from glands that attaches part of the tubularian to the surface. The next step involves the releaser gland secreting a chemical that dissolves the attachment of the tail end so that it can lift up, moves closer to where the front of the animal is, and then reattach itself to the surface with the adhesive. The last uh, embryonic tissue that we're going to discuss is the endoderm. This makes up the gastrodermis. The gastrodermis secretes enzymes that aid in digestion and absorb the end products of digestion. It is also diverticulated or branched. Planaria take food in through the pharynx with a mouth at the end of it that it comes out of their abdomen. Flatworms usually eat small live invertebrates or dead larger animals. Very few eat algae. They have an incomplete gut so the food goes in the mouth and the solid waste comes out. 
Remember, the liquid waste is removed by the proto-nephridia. As far as sexual maturity, the planaria is one of those that at sexual maturity, it is actually still considered to be in the larval form. The term for this is neoteny or pleiomorphosis. This organism is hermaphroditic and has a very complex reproductive system. Usually the organism is only male or only female at any given time. If the planaria isn't ready to sexually reproduce, the organism just splits in half into zooids. The zooids then use stem cells to grow their other body parts back. This is called regeneration. All in all, this small animal is an amazing creature that has stem cells that regenerate to regrow body parts. Researchers have used the planarian as a major organism in regeneration experiments. This bibliography covers all of the websites that were used to finish this presentation. I'd like to thank all the people um, and the websites that helped make this possible. Um, if you want to know more information, please check out my own website.